yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm Sergey Yurchenko and uh, I work at UCL Physics and Astronomy. Exomol group is uh, where we study exoplanets. We try to understand and characterize the atmospheres, if they're the atmospheres. We started about uh, five years ago, it's when I joined UCL and we had a big question whether we could help astrophysicists to understand whether there are planets with um, life or that if there are many exoplanets apart from the, our solar system, so planets that are beyond our uh, sort of solar system. So, so what, what, what sorts of things have you discovered as part of your research? When we uh, put together a group of brilliant scientists, we realized that uh, um, the, a lot of data missing in order to interpret the data important for modern uh, atmospheres of these hot objects like exoplanets or cool stars or brown dwarfs. And the, there are big holes in there in the models because the people just didn't know how methane uh, uh, absorb light, uh, interacts with light at uh, hot temperatures. And the same with water and with methane with ammonia or carbon dioxide. And uh, came up with uh, about 24, a couple of dozen molecules that were extremely important. And that we are experts in the in understanding the quantum mechanics, that the, the properties of small systems like water molecule or methane or ammonia or phosphine, and that how they behave, how they rotate, how they vibrate, and turns out important that that's exactly this information you need in order to understand how that they would interact with light, what spectrum they would have, what signature, spectral signature they would have if they absorb the light. The spectroscopy of exoplanets, it's really new thing and that's uh, the first uh, real exoplanet which orbits a uh, uh, other star uh, was, has been discovered just 20, 20 years ago. From that uh, it, it, it actually exploded and uh, now there are about, about 2,000 exoplanets. The main uh, goal is uh, to, to find the, uh, the planets, the super Earth, which would uh, probably hold life and at least it would indicate that life is possible. The interesting thing that these exoplanets, these, these stars, that are, uh, these worlds, they're so far away, you can't really see this exoplanet. But we can see the light from the star, and that uh, makes this, the, uh, also detection of exoplanets possible. That if you imagine there's a star and a planet orbiting it, and uh, if we are lucky, we are sitting somewhere on the same line. So when the, the planets will be uh, in front of the star, it will block some light. And we, we can detect this, even this very small, tiny planet uh, orbiting big star. And then that's, that's definitely proof that something is orbiting it. But it's, it, it's still not, we want to know more. So from that you can already tell many things. You can uh, know what the orbit is, how heavy this exoplanet. And if the, this planet would have atmosphere, really tiny atmosphere, but in, enough in order to, to absorb something. So this light will be going through the, the atmosphere, but not all of them will go through because uh, some of them will hit the molecules, mm -hmm. okay? And there's some other object, maybe atoms. So they, they won't penetrate through. Some of them re-emit, uh, and we are sitting on the other side and waiting for this to happen. And once we see this, we see the different colors, we see that that's, if there is water, then no photons, no light will go through. So definitely water is there. All these molecules, they have unique signatures of colors or the, or the signatures how they block the light at different colors. And the signatures like barcodes, they, they can't, uh, you, you don't have two molecules with the same, the same signatures. And that's why it's another reason that molecules are so important for these studies because the molecules, because they, it's, it's, it has so many in it, thousands, millions, billions of the lines and some particular wavelengths, some particular colors which are absolutely unique for, uh, from anything else. So that we look at water, and water is great because uh, that's, we can't live without water. If you concentrate on searching for life, which uh, is based on the same principle, it's our life, then uh, the water, you, you want to find water. And that is why there's all these, these uh, space telescopes are really crucial for us, and the, the Hubble is doing a really great job. So we analyzed the Hubble data and uh, we, we could recognize not only that uh, the hydrogen and helium is, is there, but also uh, uh, probably some traces uh, of, of uh, uh, HCN. And that's uh, we are experts in the, um, in the spectroscopy, in the 
in how these molecules interact with, with light. The problem is, of, of course, that these objects are really hot. You don't really know what is there. And it's difficult to build a lab where you can put these uh, molecules, these gases, in this condition that you think would be in these atmospheres. So that's, uh, that's where we, we can help. We reconstruct all these properties from the first principles. We know how these molecules tick, what kind of signatures they will produce. And not only we know that at uh, room temperatures, the temperatures ambient, that's uh, the, the specific for us, that you can easily do in, in, in also in the lab. But also for the hot, hot uh, temperatures, like if these, uh, the, the most of these uh, exoplanets, they have temperatures up from 1,000 uh, centigrade to 2,000 centigrade. They're really hot. I don't really want to, to, to live there. I'm sure there would be no life there. We, we can analyze them based on, on our knowledge of properties of, of these molecules. And then we, we build a library of these uh, signatures for all molecules we think likely to be, to be important for atmospheres of, of these of this objects. And then, and then once you have the library, which is huge library, each species has a, up to several billions of, um, of lines, this, this, this bar, barcode. And it's, I mean, it's a lot of computational mm. uh, effort to, to build this. But also once you have this data, uh, it will help you to model how methane will absorb light at different conditions for different atmospheres. And this is, this is crucial. We can try to put all the models together, put, say, water, methane, uh, CO2, CO, different atoms, all together, form uh, some uh, model atmosphere. And that, uh, that was a huge thing that we, we, put, uh, we, we put together all our technology, all our programs, all computer power we, we, we had, run like three million CPU hours, in order to produce the 10 billions of lines. <laughs>